Hello, Verbling.com students. Yes, you are still connected to the best place in the world to learn a second language. You know that I'm talking about Verbling.com, where you can connect 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with a native speaking English teacher. What a great way to develop improve and expand your ability to communicate in English. So this hour I need a hard-working group of students who are interested in really one of the natural wonders of the world. Without a doubt we are talking about the Great Barrier Reef off the coast of northeastern Australia, one of the wonders of the world. And <clears throat> so we have a document for people to download. Uh, this document is called GW, GWF41, and really it is important for all of the participants in the class to please download this document so that you can open it on your computer and make sure that you have the text clearly displayed on your screen so that it is easy to read. Okay, and let's begin. And this is an easy question for Luis. What I would like to do is to ask the participants to please tell us where they are connecting from and to tell us if their country has uh, an incredible natural environment, uh, if your country has a natural wonder of the world. And so, Luis, go ahead, please. <laughs> Hi, Jeff. Nice to see you again. Yes, I'm from Brazil, and as everybody knows, Brazil is a huge country, and Brazil have uh, different kinds of nature here, so yeah. it, it's it, it's hard to to, ex, to explain in English, but we have different environments, different lifestyle in these different environments. So different natural environments. Uh, can you give us some examples? I know the name in Portuguese. I don't know if you have a translation, but we okay. have the the Amazonia forest. Yeah. Okay. The Amazon forest. Yes, of course. In the north of Brazil, in north northwest, we have Caatinga. Caatinga okay. is. I, sorry, is, I don't know what that is. It, because there is only in Brazil this kind of of environment. It okay. looks like look like a desert. Oh, but, okay. But it's not specifically a desert. We have the Pantanal forest. I think okay. you know you know this because okay. Now this this may be uh, swamps or wetlands, a very wet environment with a lot of water. Yes, yes, and you, you have the. I, it's in the border, in, in the littoral. I'm on the among, edge. among the beach, out oh, the okay. coast, among the out the coast of Brazil, it's we have a specific vegetation. Okay, all right, great. And so uh, I'd like to speak to Mohammed. Hello, Mohammed. <laughs> Hello, Mohammed. We were we were hearing you a minute ago, Mohammed Ali. Okay, now we, we, we don't hear you, Mohammed. Uh, I, I have just muted your microphone, so you may need to turn it on again. Oscar, hello, Oscar. Hello, Oscar. Okay, so he's talking to someone there. Tan, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome. Uh, where are you connecting from, Tan? And uh, does your country have a beautiful natural environment, something special and unique? 
um, I'm Tan, I'm from Vietnam, and I think we have um, Ha Long Pei. Have you ever heard of it? I'm sorry, I haven't. Maybe some of the participants Halong have. Pei. Let, let me show you the picture. Oh, okay. And uh, could you describe it while you're showing like, us the picture? It's like uh, lambstone. Um, oh, it's like a thousand ah, yes. lambstone in water. These are lambstone. small islands. Are these yeah, small it's islands? Like, it's mm -hmm. not an island, but it's um, like this. Yeah. Can you see it on the screen? Now we just see your image, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, so keep keep working on using that screen share. Uh, I'm so, uh, there. We go. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So this is literally one of the natural wonders of the world. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I would say that these are small islands, uh, a coastal area with limestone cliffs. Do you, do you yeah. understand? Limestone cliffs? Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> okay. What a beautiful place. All right. Thank you. Excellent. And I'd, I'd like to go to uh, Jair. Hello. Hello. Hello, Where are you my new from? teacher. And please tell us, uh, does your country have a beautiful, uh, incredible natural environment? Okay, uh, my name is Yair and I'm from Colombia. Ah, okay. And there are a lot of beautiful places. There are a, a lot of national parks to, mm -hmm. to go. And uh, one of the most famous probably could be uh, Tairona, Tairona National Park. Oh. Okay, could you describe that for us, please? Uh, well, uh, the, the, the sea, the, the, the beach is wonderful, it's incredible, uh, but at the same time it's a little bit dangerous because of the reef, the coral reef, that is ah, very okay. close to the, to the shore, but it's incredible, that place. Okay. All right, great. Well, I'm, I'm hoping to travel to Colombia one day, so I'll remember that. <laughs> okay, and I'd like to say hello to Deja. Hello, Deja. Deja Joseph. Hello. Yes, please, tell us where you're connecting from. I am from Iraq. Now, do you have some sound in the background? Uh, the television yes, yes. playing? Could, could you please turn that off for us? And, and I'll yeah. come back to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And so I'd like to say hello to Diego. Diego. Hello, Diego, you. Right, I'm, I'm sorry, Diego, we can't hear you. And so I'd like to go to Eron. Eron. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. This is my Please first class us. with you. Okay, great. Welcome. Nice to have yeah. you here. Okay. Uh, I'm from Brazil, too. Talking from Brazil. And as you can see, this island belongs to me. Ah, okay. <laughs> the same name. <laughs> what a coincidence. Ah, Heron Island, yes. <laughs> now, do you know what that means in English? Uh, my name is, you can call me Eron. Eron, okay. Yes. It, it's a type of bird in English. Yes, I know Heron. that. Yeah. A, yeah, okay. a kind of a Very bird, good. yes, correct. Yeah. All right, and so what is your favorite part of Brazil in terms of natural beauty? Okay, I have two to tell for everyone. First one is Fernando de Noronha Island. It's a very nice island here in Brazil. And another place that I like to go, and it's, it's very nice to see, is Iguas Foz do Iguaçu Falls. Ah, uh, yes. I've there heard is of a this. very nice place to, to visit there. So very these nice are huge environment. waterfalls. Yes, a view, a huge waterfalls there. Very nice. Uh, that's it. Two, okay. Two, just two places. Yeah, no, excellent. Thank you. And so uh, I'm just a tap writing down some ideas for people. And so I'd like to go to Mohammed. 
Hello, Mohammed. Hello. Yes, how, how are, are you? you? Fine, thank you, and you? Good, thank you. Where are you connecting from? And uh, what natural beauty does your country have? Uh, I am from Iraq. Okay. And mm. so what natural areas does Iraq have? What? What natural areas does your country have? I can't understand what you mean. Yes, uh, we are talking about national parks, wilderness areas, natural environments. Okay, and so, sorry, and and then uh, Nudilia? Yeah, uh, Nudilia is in, is hello. My name is Nicolas and Nicolas. Nudilia. Yes. Hello, welcome. Um, hello. I um, come from uh, Paris, near Paris. Okay. Um, yes. And we're talking about natural environments, unique, beautiful natural environments, national parks. Uh, uh, in France, uh, there are lo a lot of beautiful landscapes, <laughs> but uh, uh, I don't, uh, I don't know any. Uh, well, what, would be, what would be your favorite area? Um, my favorite area is uh, is the south of France, where you can see a, a, a beautiful beach. Ah, okay, on the Mediterranean. Yes, yes. and uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, I don't know if you know, is uh, uh, near Marseille, uh, and the name is the Calanque, the Calanque de Marseille. Okay. So this is a, a beautiful yes. beach. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. And uh, I, I, yeah, I think the south of France is a very uh, famous area. Raphael, hello. How are you? Hello, hello Raphael. Raphael. How are you? Fine today. Good. Very nice. Excellent. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, are you talking are you about beaches? Are you talking about beaches? No, we're talking about wilderness. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Iceland. Iceland. Oh, With okay. Wilderness. Iceland. Yeah. Uh, and, and so you went to Iceland. Yeah, I went to Iceland in in the last summer. Uh, it's a very amazing place for me because it's surrounding about with ice uh, everywhere, and I come from Spain that we having ice in on the beach. In Iceland, you can see a beach with ice. It's it's like a Cuba Libre, <laughs> but, uh -huh. but oh, okay, yeah, yeah, right, like a like a drink. You mean? Yeah, like a drink. Yeah, uh huh. And, uh, and, uh, and did all. you and and did you see some of the animals, the native animals in that area? Around no, Iceland? No, I didn't did you see, see any animals. Some of the animals. sea animals? No? Oh, okay. Well, I'm thinking about whales. Yeah, yeah I see yeah. whales. Yeah, I okay. I could see whales and dolphins too, but not so much. Hmm? Okay. All Thank right. Great. Much. An excellent uh, place to visit. And Natasha, hello. Hi, Natasha. Where are you connecting from? Now you need to click on the icon of your microphone, on the Google. Hangout screen. There is an yes. icon. Yes. Can you hear yeah. me now? Please go ahead. Tell us where you're connecting from. Yes, I'm from Brazil. Okay. And what's your favorite part of Brazil in terms of beautiful wildlife or beautiful natural areas? Well, I like the south. Okay. And can it's you describe colder. that for us? Ah, the, okay. the waterfalls. It's ah, nice. Okay, so these huge the rivers mm -hmm, and the beaches. Yeah. All right, the weather is cooler. It's very beautiful. And uh, the waterfalls are on the border, aren't they, between Brazil and Argentina? Oh, the greatest of all, I guess, okay. here in Brazil. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. But Excellent. there are others. Okay, good. So I'm I'm hoping to visit the south of Brazil soon. 
because uh, I'm, I'm really looking Too forward good. to knowing more about it's your nice country. It's a nice place. All right, great. And Diego, you're there. Hi, Peter. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Tell us where you're connecting from and what kind of natural areas does your country have? I'm from Brazil too. Uh, I like so much the forest Atlantic. It's the, it is between the sea and a beach. Okay, so it's on the coast uh, and you call it the Atlantic Forest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. All right. And so uh, at this point, uh, we have some new people joining, <laughs> people leaving. I'm scaring people away. So what I'd like to do is to start the reading, and we'll meet the rest of the new people as we, as we go along. And just to ask everyone, please, you need to be able to turn on your microphone to speak. I love participation by the students, so please, everyone, Make as many comments as possible this hour. Practice your speaking. I will help you and give you suggestions. But please turn off your microphone when you're finished speaking immediately so that we eliminate all of the noise coming from your microphone. You cannot hear that you're making noise, but the rest of us can. So I'm going to bring up the document. I hope that everyone has downloaded this document so that they can read easily with the uh, clear text and image. And we're going to read two articles about the Australian Great Barrier Reef. And Luis has put the direct link for the document into the Verbling chat box. And so I'd like to say hello to uh, Deja. Deja, could you please read the title of our first article, please? Oh, Joseph? Yes. Yes. Uh, Australia's Heron Island, a canary in the coal main for coral reefs. Okay. And by this Richard. Was... Please continue. By, by Richard Harris. Uh, March. Uh, 19, 2013. Excellent. And, and we always say 19th. This is the uh, pronunciation of the numbers. And so just for island, the S is silent, so island. And does anyone know the concept of a canary in a coal mine? It, it, it sounds like a, a mine. Yes like a mine when they take out coal or carbon. Okay, so yes, we are talking about a coal mine. Uh, and now we don't say carbon, we say coal. Thank you. And so the concept of what is a canary, which is a small bird, in a coal mine. Anyone? I, f I think the yeah. idea is uh, we, s we can see a beautiful, a beautiful thing in a, in a ah, bad okay. place. All right. Okay, now that's I a great the idea is <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Uh, that's, that's not it, Luis, but thank you so much <laughs> for your idea. Uh, coal mining is very dangerous. Coal miners, the people who did the work, took canaries down into the mine with them, the little birds, because the little birds are very, very sensitive to poisons and toxins and poisonous gases. And so the canaries died before the miners. And so it was an old way for the coal miners to be <laughs> warned of dangerous conditions in the mine. And so coral reefs are very, very delicate. And so um, they are going to be the first thing affected by changes in the ocean. And so it's a warning for us that there are problems and that we should do something to save the life in the ocean. And here's a beautiful picture of one of the coral reefs surrounding, I'm assuming, Heron Island. 
Now, uh, Desa, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Desja, how do I pronounce your name? Desa Yusuf? Deja Yusuf. Deja Yusuf. Yes. Could you read this information? Uh, Heron Island is located on the southern end of the Great Barrier Reef, about 25, 25 uh, miles, miles of the miles of the northeast coast of Australia. Okay, great. And so this is the island, and it's located in the southern part. If you can see my cursor. And this is the northeastern coast of Australia. And uh, let's, let's continue with the next person. Thank you. And Diego, could you read this for us, please? Hello, Diego. I'm sorry, Diego, we can't hear you. I'm going to move on to uh, Aaron. Oh, Diego, go ahead, please. Uh, uh, NPR science correspondent Richard Harris traveled to Australia's Great Barrier Reef to find out how the coral reefs are coping with increased water temperature and increasing ocean excited uh, acidity. Acidity brought about my by our burning of fossil fuels. Day one, Richard gets a, a hefty dose of bad news. Okay, great. Let me help you with some of the pronunciation. He traveled to Australia to see uh -huh. the Great Barrier, Barrier Reef. One of the problems is the acidity of the ocean water. It's becoming more acidic and that is being caused by our burning fossil few fuel, fuels. fuels and a hefty dose is a big amount so unfortunately he got a big uh, amount a hefty dose of bad news all right and this is another map showing the location of the great barrier reef this is the northeastern coast of australia and you can see that it goes all the way from the tip of this peninsula all the way down south. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, this is, well, a little bit above uh, the, the most popular city of Brisbane, um, Australia. So unfortunately, there's bad news. And so, uh, Aaron, uh, could you please read this for us? Yes, sure, teacher. I've seen the future, and it isn't pretty. That's a tough sentence to write because the setting for this unhappy discovery is spectacular. Heron Island sits in tropical turquoise. I don't know how it's spelled. This. Turquoise. Turquoise water, waters about 25 miles of the northeast coast of Australia. It's an island on the far southern end of the Great Barrier Reef, one of our planet's most dramatic natural features, akin to the tropical rain forest, only submerged. Okay, submerged. Submerged. And turquoise is the blue color. Actually, I'm using a highlighting color that's similar to turquoise, maybe turquoise. with a bit more green in it. You okay. can. Could you read the information for this photograph, please? Okay. Sophie Dove Wright and Anna Mieke van den Heuvel of the Coral Reef Ecosystems Laboratory at the University of the Queensland, St. Lucia, check on part of an experiment on the effects of the water temperature and carbon dioxide levels on coral reefs. Okay, now this is a picture of these huge, it's referred to as pots, but they're really just very large containers and they are putting in coral and seeing how water temperature and carbon dissolved carbon dioxide levels affects 
the coral, which are small living animals. And this, of course, is also called CO2, CO2. carbon dioxide. Okay. Okay, I'm going to continue uh, with the next person. And so, uh, let's see, uh, Leila, are you there? Yes. Hi. Hello, where are you connecting from? Azerbaijan. Welcome. Could you please read this for us? And if you could speak loudly, your volume is quite low. Okay. okay. The low uh, vegetation is filled with fearless and the noisy seabirds. Snork snorkelers watch as graceful turtles swim towards the coral sand beaches. It's a laying time for them. Within a short of the lapping wave is a modern scientific laboratory. The Heron Island Island Research Station Station. And that's where the topic turns from tropical relaxation. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. Please continue. <laughs> relaxation to a nation, anxiety, um, 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 anxiety about the future of the of the world's coral reefs. Okay, excellent job. Let me help you with some of the pronunciation. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we have uh, island. The S is completely silent. We do not pronounce the S. I land, island. I island. And relaxation and nagging, nagging anxiety. And mm -hmm. the expression to be within earshot means that you are so close that you can hear the sound of the waves lapping mm -hmm. on the shore. And so we're talking about a very beautiful place with seabirds, sea turtles mm -hmm. who are going to come up on the beaches to lay their eggs. And we have a, a laboratory studying uh, mm -hmm. the effects of the changes in ocean water on the coral. And unfortunately, it's a, a very anxious situation. People are worried about the future of the world's coral reefs. Anxious. Here is a, anxious. Well, in this anxious. case, I'm sorry, the word is anxiety. 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 Worry. Concern. Anxiety. Mm -hmm. Here is a beautiful photograph of a coral reef. I was lucky enough to go traveling to Australia a long time ago in 1986 and I had the chance to scuba dive on the Great Barrier Reef. And so I'd like to go to Luis. Could you read this please for us? Yes. Sophie Dovi from the University of Queensland in Santa Lucia has spent the past couple of years crafting an experiment to see what will happen to coral reefs as the ocean absorbs even more of the carbon dioxide and heat we've added to our planet's thin skin. She is gathering a vari vari variety of coral species from the island's neighbor nearby reef and placed then in tanks that look like a cross between a keto, keto drum and an oversized plant pot. Okay, this is the container that we're talking about. Let me help you with some of the pronunciation. Uh, dove, her last name is Dove, just like dove. the word love in English, love. And uh, it's a bird, it's a type of bird, usually the symbol of peace. So Dove. No. And gathered, she gathered or collected a yeah, variety and put them in that large container that I showed you in the first picture. Uh, what does the writer refer to as our planet's thin skin? What is he referring to in this context? That's a little confusing. Anyone with a guess? 
Remember, I love student participation. You get bonus marks if you take risks <laughs> and try to answer the questions. I can try, teacher. Yes, thank you. Okay, I, underst I understand. Uh, okay, uh, plant skin, thin skin means to because we have a, a atmosphere very thin ah, yes, over the absolutely. around the world. Uh, oh, we can compare with uh, onion skins yes. of onion. Okay. Very thin skins means for me this one. Okay, sorry, this was Aaron, uh, thank you. And so, yes, it's a little confusing because they're not talking about the surface of the earth, they are talking about our atmosphere. And it is incredibly small and thin compared to the size of the earth. I've heard it described as simply a coating of varnish on the earth. It's that thin. So we're adding heat and carbon dioxide to our environment, I, I'm sorry, we are adding carbon dioxide and heat to our atmosphere. And the ocean is trying to absorb some of that. And it's changing the chemistry, the temperature and the chemistry of the ocean, making the ocean more acidic. Uh, and so I'd like to go on to uh, Nodulia. No Nicolas, Nicolas. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Nicolas, is, I'm sorry. Go no ahead. No problem. No problem. Uh, oh, okay. Into, into one set of the spots, she has put seawater at the reefs, current temperature, and carbon dioxide concentration. A second set circulates water that somewhat color and has less carbon dioxide conditions. The reef experiences 100 years ago before we started burning fossil fuels and pouring huge amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Please continue. And I just want to help yes. you with dioxide. Dioxide, I, thank you. Dioxide. Dioxide. Uh, tough two final sets of tanks or water that's warmer and contains far more carbon dioxide than the ocean absorbed today. These are glimpses into our perhaps not so distant future. Sorry, it's all uh, for me. No, 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 don't worry about that. And again, everyone should be focusing on understanding the information because uh, changing and improving your, your pronunciation is a slow, gradual process. Always communication Understanding is more important, in, in my opinion. Carbon dioxide, phi, final, final, and this word glimpses. So these are, uh, people can look into the unfortunately not so distant future. And so we have three situations here. They are testing three situations. What? What are these situations? Could someone repeat the information that, that's in this part of the text? It's quite important in terms of the kind of scientific experiment. I, I'd like someone new to, to participate. Rafael, did you want to say something? I, I think I can understand something. <laughs> but they, they put two, two pots with one with, uh, um, with water, a normal temperature, and o yeah. another um, uh, a, ki a kind of CO2, 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 CO2. Mm -hmm. CO2 with um, uh, nowadays. And in the other right. part, they put uh, water at the temperature of um, 100 years before, right. with, with the rate, with the rate of CO2 at this time. And they try to prove what happened. In and, and sorry, the, there's one more experiment. So you've done yeah. very well. They have one of these pots, one of these huge containers with water in it that is current conditions. Yeah. As you said, they have a pot that has water in it that's cooler and has less dissolved CO2 in it, like 
the oceans 100 years ago. And then there are two other pots, but what, what, what are in the other pots? What's the water like in those pots? I think it's warmer and with more CO2 than right now. Right, exactly. And they're, they're trying to, uh, maybe what will the oceans be like in the future? Yeah. Okay, and not so distant future. It may be quite soon, relatively speaking. All right, excellent job. That's exactly the participation that, that I recommend for students. So great job. And so, thank you, Nicholas. I'm going to go on to Natasha. Could you read this for us, please, Natasha? Yes. Carbon dioxide matters to coral because when it sucks into seawater, it turns into carbonic acid. We've put so much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere that the oceans are already 30% more acid now than they were before the Industrial Revolution. And as acidity increased, it becomes harder and harder for corals to build the calcium structures. Eventually, corals will need to spend a lot of energy just to prevent the skeletons from dissolving to sea water. Okay, great. And so uh, there is some interesting, uh, well, I find the information interesting here. And so can people uh, repeat some of the information here? Why, uh, why did they mention the Industrial Revolution, which I guess took place in, in, in Europe? They're talking about acidity. They're talking about skeletons. <laughs> and again, what I'm looking for mm -hmm. is, do people understand the information that's here? Can someone make some short comments? You don't have to. Actually, I would prefer it if someone did not explain everything, but just if a student could step forward and make a short comment about some of the information that was in this paragraph. Yeah, yeah I, I think the, the, this paragraph is told us that the water sea is more est than it's, before. It, right. So then it's before becoming more the and more revolution. acidic. Acidic. Yeah. Good. Acidic. So it's 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 not allowing that the coral build their calcium structures. Right, because the calcium, the the coral, uh, uh, what I understand, I, I believe this is correct, that all of this is coral, but most of it is dead. Most of it are the old skeletons. Really, the only living part of coral is the very thin coating on the surface. That's where the animals are creating new skeleton and building themselves up and up. But only the skin is living. The rest of it is made of uh, uh, calcium, which is dissolved by acid. And the current situation is that the oceans are already 30% more acidic due to the CO2 that we have been putting into the atmosphere ever since the Industrial Revolution. Uh, what's important about the Industrial Revolution? What happened in the Industrial Revolution in this context? Why did, why did they mention that? The fabric is uh, responsible for the emission, I don't know if this word is correct, of yes. uh, carbon dioxide. Absolutely. So uh, we say factories began burning huge amounts of fossil fuels. And I, I think in Britain they were burning coal. So that's when we began putting lots and lots of CO2 into the atmosphere. Okay, so great. Thank you so much. I hope people find this information interesting, but it's really great practice for your English to read something and then paraphrase the information. Uh, Rafael, could you read this for us, please? Yeah, of course. Heat is also a problem. Most of the additional heat that Earth has absorbed as a result of the enhanced greenhouse effect has in fact been soaked up by the world's oceans. In fact, we are really experiencing ocean warming more than global warming. The result, though, opened up the first of these things. 
present-day conditions. The corals look like they come from a picture book of life of, on the reef. The second tank, pre-industrial, look about the same. Though, Dob says, those corals are actually growing faster and are healthier than those growing in the modern day seawater. Okay, great. Let me help you with a pronunciation. This is uh, heat, uh, like the word eat in um, English, eat, uh, so heat. heat. And, and we do pronounce the H enhanced, enhanced yes. greenhouse effect. Enhanced. Enhanced. All right, and so the two tanks, one with uh, the 100 year old conditions and present day conditions look the same, but the scientists can see that the corals in the uh, pre-industrial revolution um, conditions are growing faster and are healthier. Okay. And now let's uh, read this information. Uh, I'm going to go to, ah, hey, uh, wait, Wajay, how are you? Yeah, hi, I'm well. What about you, sir? I'm fine, thank you. Could you please yeah. read these two paragraphs for us? Of course. This composite image of ports used in the experiment shows how healthy crawl left is dramatically affected by higher carbon dioxide levels and sea temperature. Yes, and so right. on the left you have healthy coral and on the right you can see there is a dramatic effect. The coral yeah. looks dead. All right, could you please read the rest of uh, this paragraph, please? Yeah, courtesy of Sp uh, Sophie Dove, the third and fourth tanks are the uh, shocked shockers. Most of the crawl have died in this future world. Uh, gl glaciers, gelatinous, 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 gelatinous black sm slime floored across the top of the tank. Crawls still hanging in their have lost the colorful, colorful that live inside those calcium silicon, silicons, so they are bleached white. Yes, skeletons. This is the, well, Skeleton, humans yeah. have a skeleton made, of up, made up of our bones, and corals, we, we refer to their calcium structures as skeletons. And so, really, a terrible impact of higher temperatures and higher CO2 levels. And I'd like to go to uh, uh, Yair. Yair, please, could you read this for us? Okay, of course. Scientists have been worrying about this for well over a decade. It's taking some time for the experimental evidence to catch up with the basic chemistry, which strongly suggests that many marine animals that build shells from calcium are going to have it grow as carbon dioxide builds up in the water at heat and the situation for these corals is green. Okay, so they're going to have it rough. It's going to, as the acidity of the ocean water increases due to dissolved levels, uh, high dissolved levels of CO2, it's going to be very difficult. These little creatures, these little marine animals that build shells from calcium are going to have it very, very difficult in an ocean. And with uh, the factor of rising heat, uh, the situation is really grim, meaning very negative uh, very bad, yeah, and and so uh, great. Uh, let's uh, keep moving on here. Uh, I'm going to go back to uh, Deja Joseph. Could you read this paragraph for us, please? Yes. Uh, that is not the end of the story. Thankfully, this experiment 
overs glimpses glimpses at our most likely feature but it is not the only possible path carbon dioxide levels and sea uh, temperatures depend on the what humanity does over the coming decades 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 yeah and for everybody few future future and glimpse this is a look glimpse a quick glimpse. look at a possible future but it all depends on us it depends on what humanity does and what are we going to do all right and so what I would like to do is to turn off the screen share we, we've done a lot of reading and so I'd like to get some comments from people P please feel free to make whatever comment you would like but we're talking about global warming we're talking about CO2 levels what can we do to stop this uh, impact on our on our atmosphere on our oceans uh, on our planet so uh, and we're talking about uh, the health of the oceans and the seas in general and so uh, maybe Diego can I ask you for a comment please so uh, we're, we're, we're having trouble maybe it's your Am connection I available? Diego. Yeah. I'm available for the comment yes but I, I, I would like to uh, speak to Diego right now okay thank you uh, I'll come to you in a minute so I'm sorry we can't hear you Diego uh, Aaron a comment please okay teacher in my opinion the human being not, we don't have to be uh, selfish we have to think with the all the earth the humanity to find another source for energy yes alternative energy for example coming from uh, for example, for trees, for another kind, but the trees we can plant and and uh, self-sustained uh, forest to do right. another kind of energy. For example, yeah, okay, I, I agree with you. I, my opinion is the world the world is will be destroyed if we do not discover a new form of clean, mm -hmm. limitless, cheap energy. Yes, please, a comment from you, please. Uh, actually, uh, we, it's we, we what we just just finished to read is more one more example what the humanity is doing with our planet. So since the industrial revolution, we we had been destroying our planet uh, in a cost of improve our civilization so now I think we have the knowledge of all of this and see the past see what what we just do what we just did what we have just done for for don't don't repeat the same things wrongs what we just done right Right, what we've just been doing, uh, not to just, not to repeat, but not to continue doing what, we, what we're doing, yeah. I wanted to put the comment in the Verbling chat box of a buffer. Uh, this is a, a concept in English where something uh, limits changes and effects of a changing situation. So the ocean has been saving us because it has been absorbing all of that extra CO2 and it has been absorbing all of that extra heat. It has slowed down the changes that we've been making by changing the atmosphere, but the, the ocean is reaching its limit. It, it, it can't continue to absorb and protect us and slow down the changes that we're making. And so, uh, Natasha, do you have a comment for us, please? 
Now you need to turn on your microphone. So oh, everybody needs to practice turning on and off your microphone. Now? Yes, your sound is perfect. Go ahead, please. So we don't need to work in big actions. There are some little things we could do at home and help to reduce the increase of pollution and global warming. Yeah, and, and people and are not. Be, and yeah, sorry. People, I don't know. They just forget these things. I think right. they're just saying, oh, we need to do something. You don't start doing something at home. It doesn't work. Okay, can you give me an example of something you're doing? Like uh, um, recycling? Yes. Okay, great. And it's so, a good, idea. good. Yeah. And so, uh, you said to forget. Uh, I wanted to share the verb to ignore. And so, I, I think people kind of forget it or they just ignore the the news the information and they just keep doing yeah. what they're doing yeah great thank you for your comments Rafael go ahead please well, when you was talking I I was thinking in in Iceland well, uh, like I mm, mm, saying at the beginning of the the class also the icebergs in in Iceland are decreasing his rate uh, about mm, two hundred two 20 meters every no two meters every day, every year and is decreasing because the greenhouse effect at the warming of the atmosphere is decreasing uh, his length every year what we can do a lot of things i think uh, this is a politic issue as every every everything and also it's a economic issue and Mm, we are using a lot of mm, fuel, uh, fuel, um, fuel, fossil fuel, fuels, fossil fuels, mm -hmm. and we have to increase solar energy, um, mm, water energy, and, and other kinds of energy. But mm, money is in fuel of fossils. Um, Money is in the cars, not in the bicycle, as you as you say <laughs> in a lot of classes to us. Uh, okay. yeah, <laughs> we, we can change our mind. I hope it. I'm looking forward to change. Yeah. No, no, great. And so uh, I, I put that the glaciers are melting. They yeah. are receding. They are moving back. Mm -hmm. And uh, fossil fuels. The word fuel begins with the sound of the word few. It's the opposite of many. Few. Fuel. Few. Few. It's, yeah, it's, the pronunciation is difficult. Wajay, a comment from you, please. Yeah. Ah, I'll, I came late, so I, I didn't oh, I uh, get a proper lecture. So <laughs> I, I, uh, my opinion is that about the, uh, this uh, document, that uh, the improvement of uh, our uh, in, in greenhouse, so the, the green effect of the, uh, the improvement, the, the diffuse of uh, the other extra extra fossil fuels uh, effect that impact our us. Now I'm sorry, Wajay, uh, your your sound is very broken, and unfortunately, it's getting worse. I'd just like to read the comments uh, from Hamid. Uh, we need to think of our grandchildren, not being so selfish and thinking about us, but should be thinking about our, our grandchildren. Uh, and we are going to, uh, now they are going to inherit the world from us, and uh, we are, we're just guests. We're just here for a little while. We're, we're temporary guests. Uh, and so I'm sorry, Wajay, uh, we didn't really hear what you said. So if you can try to improve your, um, if, if you can try to improve your uh, connection. And Yair, could you uh, give us a comment, please? Okay, uh, I will try to express. Uh, and I think that it is uh, very important this issue about the warming, the global warming. And uh, as a, 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 a mate, as a friend here in the group, said that it is about the selfish of humanity. Uh, it, it reminds me like when when we watch cartoons, 
when we were children, when we see uh, this natural size like money, like great quantity of money, and they don't think that they w it will affect negative uh, to, to the world. And we, we think about ourselves, and we, and we think that it will not affect the others. Okay. So no, thank you. Uh, okay. uh, no, you you you've done a very good job expressing that. And then just a, a personal note: just we can hear the sound in the background. So for for the next class, it's better if you turn off the the television in the background. We can hear some of that sound. Thank you. And Diego, are you there? Right. And I I'd like to go. Um, we're we're going to stay with the students who have been been with us. Uh, I'd, I'd like to bring up the next screen share, uh, sorry, the next part of the document. Let's, let's take a look at this. And um, what we're going to do is, is do a little bit more reading. We've got five minutes here. And so uh, hello to uh, Ennis. Ennis, are you there? I can see your uh, video, Ennis. Mayo. Ramdane, you need to turn on your microphone. Okay, now we'll we'll come back to you. And so, uh, uh, Hamdi, hello. Hello, Mr. Jeff. Yes, uh, and please remind the group where are you uh, connecting from? I'm from Egypt. And now I've heard there is beautiful scuba diving in Egypt. This is correct. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, wonderful. This is in. Uh, in in Sharm el Sheikh, this and is in Sinai. There, in are Sinai. there coral reefs there? Oh yeah, a lot of coral reefs, and it's very beautiful, a wonderful colors. You can find a wonderful reef with a wonderful colors. Right. Fantastic. But you know, whenever human go going, yeah, they, they will destroy everything. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We always have an, a negative impact. Yeah, so, yeah. could you read the uh, title of this article, please? On Australians, in Australia's Great Barriers Reef, there is a, there is a turf battle raging. 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 Now, there, this is humorous. A turf war or a turf battle is where two things are fighting over an area. And so, we're talking about coral in this case and seaweed. Could you read the information uh, about the photograph, please? Okay. Uh, Gulmero Diaz Bolido from uh, Giraffe University in Brisbane grows, uh, grows beds of uh, seaweeds, seaweed attached to pieces of coral in tanks at the research facility on Australian's Hero Island. Okay, this is another story from that area. I'm going to uh, uh, skip that. And uh, uh, Aaron, could you read this for us, please? Okay, teacher, picture a coral reef and the first things likely to come to mind are brilliantly colored fish swimming among stout branches of coral. Let your mind wander a bit more and you might imagine some sea turtles, stingrays and sharks. Okay, great. So he's painting a picture of the beautiful reef area. Here is an aerial photograph of some of the barrier reef. And as you can see, it just literally goes for uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kilometers. I believe it's thousands of kilometers. All right. But do you, when you think of a, uh, a reef, do you picture seaweed? Uh, Luis, could you read this for us, please? Yes, seaweed, not so much. But it turns out there are 700 species of algae that grow on coral reefs compared with about 300 species of coral. And if you ask Guillermo Diaz Polido of Griffith University in Brisbane, Australia, 
See, we shouldn't just be an afterthought. Uh, okay, and I'm going to move ahead here uh, because we're running out of time. And uh, let's, but I'd, I'd like to um, read, uh, have someone read this. Uh, Natasha, could you read this for us, please? Sure. <laughs> um, wait a minute. It says, sure, sure some algae. Please go Can ahead. Can I continue? Mm -hmm. Bit grungy. Some reef seaweed thought happened to be quiet, though, I'm sorry, happened to be quite beautiful if you take a moment to appreciate the last flashy charms. And algae turned to play an important role on the reef. Okay. For one. Okay. Yeah, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm going to end now. I, I, maybe I should not have started the, the next article. <laughs> and, and maybe we'll. Uh, cover that in, in a future class. But I wanted to introduce the idea of maybe the seaweed will help with uh, protect the reef with some of these changes in temperature and CO2 levels. All right, and so great job everybody. Uh, you really did a fantastic job expressing your ideas about this subject. I ask all of you, please, Get personally involved with your Verbling.com classes. Contact the teachers and give them ideas of the classes that you would like to see. You can contact Verbling.com as well, the people, the, the, the team that, that are making all of this possible. You can contact me directly with my Facebook page. Please go to my Facebook page and put down the specific ideas that you would like to have included into your classes. Uh, I have taught lots of different classes, so you can come up with any idea in the universe, mm -hmm. any topic for discussion, if you want to focus on music, if you want to focus on grammar, if you want to focus on listening, whatever you want. I need specific ideas. I'm going to work with you to create the class and I'll make sure to book the class mm -hmm. at a time when you can take the class and participate. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll, I yeah. hope that you all send me one good idea, something that you find really interesting, motivating, and inspiring, so that you're learning your English, you're improving English, and you're learning something or doing something interesting and motivating at the same time. Killing two birds, one stone. That's the idea. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye, right. right, Justin. Bye. Bye. Take care so much. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Good work. Very interesting comments.